be waiting for us and signing up for our 2012 SMPS Chapter Awards Program. Um, during the presentation, we hope that you get a lot of great tips and ideas and your questions answered about what you need to do to prepare a winning submittal for the Striving for Excellence Program, for the subprograms, and for the Chapter President of the Year. So um, we're just going to do a little housekeeping. Many of you have been on SMPS webinars before. You might be um, very familiar with this process, but for those of you who haven't, I just want to walk you through just a couple of things to make sure that we're really getting um, everyone able to participate and you feel comfortable navigating your screen. Um, what you see in front of you right now is just um, a little, a little patch uh, size of the control panel that should be on your screen. There will be times throughout the presentation that we're going to ask you if you have any questions, if you have something that you want to share. Um, and in that event, uh, the only things that you need to do, if you want to raise your hand right here, there's, you should see like a little hand um, on your control panel. All you need to do is click that. And once that's clicked, one of the presenters will see that your hand is raised. And when we're given the opportunity and the time to stop, we'll go ahead and either ask you, um, we'll unmute you give you uh, or say your name and then we'll let you ask your question. Um, if you don't want to raise your hand and you don't want to speak but you do have a question, well then all you need to do, hold on, I need to put my do not disturb on, sorry about that. Um, but if you have a question and you don't want to speak up, then all you need to do in your control panel, you should see have a section here that says enter a question for staff or um, just simply enter, enter, enter a question. Right there you would tap it and again our panelists and speakers on this presentation will keep an eye out on that and then we'll make sure again um, when the time permits that we address those questions. And we, we will definitely allot time um, to make sure that all of those things are addressed. And again, we won't have a whole lot of time today and you might have other questions. So if that is the case, um, you know, certainly you can send me, um, Tina Myers, or Mary Cruz an email directly and we'll make sure that we get um, a, some type of response to you right away. Also, you should know that this presentation will be recorded. I know some of you have asked about that. And you might have some other chapter volunteers you work with that are curious about that or that you're working with on this um, that also want to see it and they didn't have a chance or whatever to register today. So, um, you know, hopefully that helps you navigate. And let me uncollect um, this. And we'll start with who your presenters and speakers are today. Um, just to kind of get us started, the Chair for Striving for Excellence Committee this year is Marion Thatch from Distinction in Marketing. Our incoming Chair for Striving for Excellence, Pat Bellotto, Director of Marketing for BL Companies. Our Chapter Delegate from SMPS National, Holly Bolton from uh, CE Solutions. And Pat Ellis from SMPS DC, who have had some winning submittals, is joining us to help us through this process. She is from Faithful and Gould. And me, Tina Myers, I'm your moderator today, and we also have, and she's not on this slide, unfortunately, and I'm so sorry about this, Mary, but Mary Cruz, uh, who is our Director of Chapter Services, is also joining in on this call today, and she will be helping answer our questions as well. Um, so let's quickly go into this. And again, I want to welcome everybody for registering today, and hopefully we're going to have that many more chapters participate in the program. Um, we want to make sure that you have a good understanding of the process of submitting for Striving for Excellence, whether you have done it several times in the past or whether you're brand new to this. We want to make sure that we have answered your questions, and we want to make sure that you feel really confident and we're encouraging you um, to put in that submittal, even if it's not for the full Striving for Excellence. We have subcategories and programs and communications that you might feel really strongly about and excited about one thing that your chapter did. And we, we want to encourage you just to embrace one of those award submittals and, and process that. And of course, we want every one of you to be successful and really make this the best submittal possible. So that said, what we're going to start with is the chapter president of the year. And the chapter president of the year, we have, just in case all of you aren't aware, we have a couple of different um, uh, groups within the Striving for Excellence umbrella. Chapter president of the year is one of those groups. 
this year, and she is not on the call, but she was the winner of Tafta President of the Year for 2011. Um, Allison Carney from Washington, D.C., is our chair. Holly Bolton is the National Board Liaison, and I am serving as the staff liaison. Rose Fetter, Jana Montforte, Michelle Monette, Bill Reeder, Lori Strickland, Mike Toach, and Veronica White will be serving as the judges for this group this year. So, who should submit and why, and the eligibility. To be eligible, please know that it's the current president who is serving for, or who is currently serving the 2010-11 program year. Or have served, I'm sorry, have served as the 2010-11 program year, and all nominations must be made by the current SMPS member. And actually, um, I think a couple of the presenters had, had some input on this and who should submit and why. And I think that even um, Pat Ellis, you had commented on if you have a chapter who is going to be applying for the full Striving for Excellence, that that might even be a, a trigger to maybe submit your chapter president um, for this award as well. So do you think that you want to go into that just a, a little bit before we even go into specifically what, um, what they need to, to hand in? Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, can everyone hear me? OK. OK. I can hear um, you. Yeah, we, we always think of it in Washington, DC. We always want to have the best president. Um, we always want to be competitive with our programs, our initiatives. So we're always thinking about it. And this year, um, we felt we had a really strong case for providing those services. So once the Striving for Excellence criteria were put together. We use those as a baseline for which to further develop the chapter president of the year submission. Um, so, I mean, I can talk about you know the chapter president of the year a little bit more. Um, um, sure. We'll wait until, well, yeah. Well, why don't we go ahead and just talk about what they need to submit, and then we can have you go over the winning submittal. Sure. Okay. So, what you need to submit is right here you see a copy of the chapter awards application. I only need one application. So we're asking for 10 originals of each entry. That does not mean I need 10 applications to go with each one of those submittals or originals. I just need one. And that is for all of IOP to track what has been submitted by our chapters. We also need to make sure, and we must, have one PDF of the entire submittal. That means the cover, the agenda, anything else that you have in that packet. This is something that we need for our files and that, of course, at the end of the awards year and after the gala, we submit all of this and put it online and make it available to our uh, chapters to review and get some really great ideas. So it is important that we get the PDF. You can send it to us on a CD or you can send it to us on the flash drive. Um, so however you need to do that, that's fine, but it needs to be with your submittal. The deadline is April 27th, 2012. That doesn't mean you send it on April 27th. That means that I must have it in office by April 27th. So if you have any questions about that or what you need to send, um, just, just give us a call. We're happy to help you through it. So I'm going to go give it back to you. I'm um, actually, Pat Bellotto is going to talk a little bit about the criteria. And then Pat Ellis, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit more about the submittal itself. So Pat Bellotto, I'm going to give it to you now. Thank you, Tina. Uh, before I start, though, there is a question. So this is for our immediate past president. I just Perfect. wanted you to answer that question for them. What, so what, what was the question? So this is for our immediate past president. Yes. So it is not is not the person who is currently serving. All right. Judging criteria. Thank you, Tina. Uh, letters sure. of support. This is so critical. Um, not only do the three letters of support need to come from SMPS members, but they should be uh, uh, at least one, if not all, from the nominees chapter. Um, they also need to be two pages or less stating reasons why the writer feels the nominee should receive the award. No more than three letters will be accepted. Um, this is critical. Um, I've served on a panel where I actually saw a letter that had ver something very generic, and the, and the candidate actually lost points because of that. Um, number two is achieve 
or enhance chapter financial stability, demonstrate fiscal responsibility, which might include recovery from a d difficult financial year, or continuation of a positive trend, adhering to an annual budget, positive cash flow, a net income, a reserve fund, or an an annual audit. And that's 20 points. The letters count for 10, as I believe you can see on your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, initiate new chapter national program. Ensure chapter programs are in line with domains of practice to increase the value of membership. That's 10 points. Increase chapter national organization visibility. Encourage publicity in a variety of channels. And that's uh, 20 points. And actually, uh, I've served on uh, several judging panels. And this is where sometimes uh, the submissions aren't as um, specific. And you have to end up finding things in various areas of the, of the book to actually get the answer. And so I encourage you to make sure that you talk about your publicity, what you do, and how you work with other organizations and increase uh, exposure for SMPS. Uh, number five is recruit and retain members, encourage and participate in, eff participated in efforts to show a net gain in number of members and to make chapter members feel more welcome and included, that's 20 points, and then lead, led the chapter in an innovative manner, fostered an environment among members and other chapter leaders where new ideas and approaches were embraced and successful for 20 points. Um, we actually, um, uh, the only thing I can suggest on the last one is to be specific and share the successes. Uh, I've seen where um, some uh, award submittals are uh, very generic. And you'll see in the end what we uh, suggest is to follow instructions carefully and to be specific. Tina, I think. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for, for talking us through that. Um, I think at this point we're going to ask Pat Ellis to walk us through the year winning submittal from last year for Allison Carney. Um, just just before you get started, Pat, one of the things that um, I just want to say about Pat is that she was an integral part of helping put together um, the you're striving for excellence, and I believe it was this one, one too, Pat. But they were really very good, uh, as long as as well as some others too, about really looking at the criteria um, and thinking it through. And I think you guys might have even had a committee. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to you, Pat, and you can talk us through just what it takes to put put this together. Okay, thank you, Tina. Um, first of all, if you're not organized. You might as well hang up now. <laughs> um, I will tell you that if you're, you know, you really need to be organized. And what Tina stated as far as following the criteria is key. Um, so get organized, and you need to select a person um, or a committee to organize all this information and provide the information and do the writing. So someone needs to be assigned that task. There needs to be a calendar or, I mean, the deadline comes along really, really quickly. Um, it's a lot like putting together a response to a request for proposal. Um, you'll probably pick a theme. I would strongly urge you to do that. The DC chapter um, has picked a theme every year and followed the theme through Striving for Excellence and President of the Year, um, assuming that you will submit for President of the Year. It helps to have an excellent president um, and someone who's not afraid to toot that person's horn because quite often if we're writing about ourselves, we're reluctant to do so. So someone who will tell the truth but um, brag a little bit. Um, I can't urge this enough. I mean, Tina has already stated this, to follow the criteria closely um, the DC chapter traditionally uses headings and labels and the like so that the reviewers do not get confused. It's a lot, I will say this over and over again, I'm sure, like putting together a winning submission if you pursue government work. Um, you have to be organized. Um, in, we always include a table of contents so that people know where they are and page numbers. Um, Include relevant examples um, to highlight the criteria in the in the appendix. In the appendix, um, I think, is there a 10-page limit? 
to the commission itself, but so far, um, National hasn't put, <laughs> or the committee hasn't put a limit on the amount of information you can include in the appendix. So label that, um, also make it easy to find, put references to where things can be found in the body of the, of the submission itself. Um, one thing that we found really helpful was we were on one of these calls several years ago in Washington, D.C., and someone from the panel suggested including as many statistics as possible. And I think that really helped um, the, the Washington, D.C. chapter always includes historically statistics showing an upward trend. Um, obviously, if you're submitting your president for an award, you would have an upward trend or you wouldn't be going through the motions here, which means graphs and charts and anything visual. Um, so like the theme, we, we carried the theme through our Striving for Excellence submission as well as the President of the Year submission. Um, so if you, once you pick a theme, you can use keywords that support that theme. Um, I would suggest it's really important to highlight how your president contributed to the upward trend, um, assuming that you're showing an upward trend, and, or you wouldn't be submitting for your president for the award. So um, it doesn't have to be, you know, grandiose. It can just be, you know, a few select words, keywords, just like you would put together a winning submission. Um, and show what your president had to do with that. Otherwise, it's just another chapter award. It's not an award for the president. For example, Allison is an excellent writer. Um, she's also a very sincere speaker, and she doesn't. She finds it uncomfortable to talk about herself. But one of the things that we found really encouraging. Um, Allison is very encouraging, very accepting, and using those words helps to make the President of the Year a person, um, not just a story on the paper. So highlight innovations um, advanced by your chapter president as well. One of the things that Allison did this year was to have a kickoff meeting in the beginning of the year stating right up front, we will strive for excellence this year, whether we submit for the award, um, or not, we are striving for excellence. So highlight innovations, and, and then Allison gave some suggestions, but mandated that each committee chair come up with an innovative idea to be better this year than we were last year, while still meeting the criteria. Um, illustrate growth with graphs and charts, um, areas such as membership programs, sponsorship, if you've shown any growth at all coming from a difficult year or a challenge of any kind, it's okay to talk about that um, as long as you're, you're coming out of it, any upward trend whatsoever. And plan to win. I think being organized, having a calendar, having a dedicated person who takes this on as a serious task, someone who wants to do it, who works with the committees, who, if you're keeping it a secret from your president, that they are being submitted, which we can do. Um, these are all things that help to push your agenda forward. Um, consistency, organization, and meet the criteria are really key. Absolutely. And have fun with it. I mean, you, <laughs> if you're keeping it a secret from the president, it's fun for the President of the Year Committee or the Striving for Excellence, Excellence Committee to talk behind that person's back a little bit. But make yeah. sure you've got a president who really is worthy. And right. the DC chapter definitely got that in Allison Carney. Well, thank you so much, Pat. I really appreciate that. Um, there is something I do need to mention here. And um, I need to make a correction. And the actual president um, that is 
uh, eligible to be nominated is not the one who is the past president. It is the one who is currently serving. And I was probably stumbling a little bit when I first saw that slide because I knew that it didn't sound right, but it was on the slide and I didn't correct it. So please understand that the president that um, is eligible is the current standing president. It would be the one for the 2011-12 program year. So that's who's in place right now. So um, if you have any questions, I'll make sure to change that on the slides because we'll make not only the recording but the slides available as well. Um, but please know that that's what the deal is and that is what is on the awards criteria. I just didn't correct it in the presentations and I apologize for that. So um, this is an opportunity to, we're just going to give you a moment. Um, if you have a question, to go ahead and type out a question or to raise your hands. Um, the presenters are going to just take a look and see if there's any activity and make sure yes, that we're addressing Mary, everything. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Mary. I don't see any hands raised. Um, and then we've answered a couple of questions, and you just addressed it as well. So okay, unless perfect. anybody has a, a question, please click your, your little hand, and um, I'll be sure to unmute you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mary. We'll, we'll go on. And certainly we'll still have time a little bit later to address any other questions you may have. So at this point, Mary and Thatch, I'm going to ask you to introduce your team for the Striving for Excellence program. Thanks, Tina. Mm -hmm. um, uh, welcome everyone that's on the call and thanks for joining us. We really look forward to your, your submissions this year. Um, I am the chair this year. Pat Bellotto is our incoming chair. Michelle Monette is, was our past chair. Um, and Holly Bolton is our national board liaison. And Tina is our national staff liaison. Um, the Striving for Excellence is broken down into five different groups. We have our Striving for Excellence extra large um, chapters. And Pat Bellotto will be um, the section head for that. Jennifer Bentley will be taking on the large chapters, and Amy Collins will be doing the small to medium chapters. In addition to um, the actual chapter submissions, um, we have categories for submitting uh, programs on their own and communications on their own. Susan um, Merrigan will be um, uh, the programs, and uh, I don't have my notes in front of me, but we actually do have someone for communications. Um, we have quite a few people that are already signed on to be part of our committees. Jessica, Cad Jessica Cadkin, Jane Caffey, Joe Craig, Catherine Diaz-DeWitt, Barry Garrison, Amy Hopkins, Michelle Jamison, Brandy Little, Stacy Robin, um, Bethany Rustic-Smith, Stacy Stout, and Ashaya. Uh, I'm not sure I'm saying her name right. I'm not sure either. Yeah. And um, most of these people um, have had experience judging before. Some are new judges. We like to keep changing it up from year to year um, so that we have a continual um, process that each year we have people that know what they're doing, but we have new blood uh, to keep it fresh. Absolutely. Move on. Um, so, you know, basically who should submit and why? Um, every chapter should submit. Uh, and the reason you should submit, it's a great barometer to see how you're doing. Um, all SMP, SMPS chapters are eligible. Whether you decide to submit for the grand, you know, the whole award, um, or you just choose to uh, do a program or communications. So let's move on. So our Striving for Excellence when it comes to at the chapter level, um, your Criteria starts with your program educational goals and program descriptions. This is 30 points, which is the largest point description. We break down those 30 points, as you can see, in the uh, chapter's ability to demonstrate that they provide creative educational opportunities to their members, including uh, CPS certification, recertification, minority and diversity-focused events, and programs based around the six domains of practice. It's important that you track the six domains and how that goes. Most of you are used to having to turn that report into national. Um, so it's, again, this is part of being organized and just, you know, managing it as you go. Um, for clarification on diversity, we have a slide and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but uh, the next communicate, that, so that's 12 points on your, the actual programs that you put together. Um, focus on community and industry 
contributions, including fundraising, is five points. Um, networking opportunities, four points. Your marketing achievement award for chapters, members, or special event awards um, is um, four points. And your program events targeting diversified career ta tracks from the coordinator to the CMO is five points. All of that kind of plays into some of that diversity. Tina, can you move on? And so this is the diversity statement, just so you're all aware. Um, SMPS embraces and promotes diversity in our organization, which includes our differences, mutuality, and similarities. We recognize that our diversity is reflected by our different people and firms. We believe our varying ethnicities, cultures, genders, ages, levels of experiences, physical abilities, and other differences benefit us as individuals and as an organization. In SMPS, we will promote programs and activities that espouse our beliefs and increase awareness, understanding, recruitment, and participation of diverse persons and firms. Um, so it's important that you can help. Um, I don't think you have to spend an enormous amount of time, but if you can address how your chapter is managing your diversity um, goals within your chapter is what we're looking for. If you move on, Tina. Sure. Um, the next criteria is management overview and benefits. So how are you managing your chapter? Are, how is the new growth in member retention over the last three years? Um, six points out of the 30. Annual membership drive and investing in members is four points. Chapter leadership development and training chapter board su successors, six points. Chapter membership mentoring program is six points. New member orientation program is four points. And involvement engagement of past chapter leaders is four points. So as you can see, there's very specific points and you want to make sure that you're covering all of them and addressing how you're managing that within your chapter. Your communications um, is a 25 points out of the total criteria. And that's the use, uh, one of the things that's very important to this and I've judged in the past and actually unfortunately had to, um, I think we actually had to kind of knock the points back from a chapter who did not use the approved SMPS chapter logo. Um, we felt that, you know, one of the things, we are a marketing organization and we know how important brand is, so there are very specific SMPS chapter identity guidelines and that should be something that should be paid attention to. Um, when it comes down to the individual points, um, you have your chapter newsletter or your electronic news, basically how are you communicating with your members, uh, the effective use of your website, your membership marketing materials, and then a member surveys, which is how are you getting feedback from your chapter and then the results that you get. Moving on. Your financial health, and of course, um, that's an important topic in this particular economic. Um, so your program sponsorship, how you're going about getting your sponsors, it, it maybe any innovative ways you've you've uh, tackled getting programs and sponsors in this climate, your chapter business plan and strategic plan, your financial statement including a summary of your assets and liabilities, and then um, scholarship programs for members and or academia. Um, and I think we have discretionary points, mm -hmm. don't we? We do. We don't have a slide for it, but we do we have We don't. I believe there's also points. five points that is, um, and that's really as the committee, when we look at each judge has the opportunity to kind of look at the overall package. Was it themed well or, um, you, know, you know, what caught your eye? How was it organized? And so I believe there's five points for that. And so to me, that five points can be the difference. If you have two pretty close chapters and one really outshines the other, those five points are important. So. Um, I think it's important. And they don't, they don't actually have to be granted. They can be. So I think that that's Absolutely. something to pay attention to. Okay. And just so you see on your screen, I've put up the Striving for Excellence criteria. So if you have any more questions about it, it's all there and it's all up on the website as well. So let me just quickly go back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Perfect. Okay. So we're back to what to submit. You have one awards application, very similar to what Tina mentioned on the President's. Um, you just need to send in one awards application, 10 originals of each of your entries, um, one PDF of the entire submittal, that's your covers, your 
your backup materials, whatever. And again, the deadline is April 27th in Tina's hands in, in uh, D.C., right? Uh, in Alexandria, um, that's it. In Alexandria and um, not postmarked. So exactly. make sure you budget your time accordingly. Okay. Then at this point, we're going to ask Pat Ellis, once again, because she was a part of this process, um, to highlight some of the things that they went through for the Striving for Excellence submittal and putting this together. So Pat, can I get you to chime in here? I love to talk, Tina. Yes, you may. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, even if no one's there. Um, I feel funny sitting in my office like talking, and there's no one around. Um, we were the DC chapter, Washington DC chapter, made it a plan a few years back um, after I served on the Striving for Excellence Committee in a very minor role um, to use the Striving for Excellence criteria to become the best chapter we could become. Um, and we've carried that, for, that theme forward throughout the years. Um, we were very fortunate this year to be awarded the um, grand prize. Um, which includes money and good stuff. But uh, one of the things that the DC chapter does, and I would encourage you all to do, um, is to follow the criteria very closely, as closely as you can. I don't think anyone can emphasize that enough. Um, the, the criteria, um, a lot of what I'm saying is repetitive. I've talked about it as president of the year submission. Form a committee, um, one of the things that the DC chapter has um, worked hard to do is maintain involvement of the more senior members. So we drew from that group, um, from a diverse group, to form a committee um, to present the data that you need um, and go and um, organize everything. Um, early, early, early in the year, uh, form this committee, get together, have happy hour, and present what um, have a chairperson who's usually the incoming president um, from the DC chapter. It's, it's a great way to get to know what's going on everywhere across the board. Um, present what you what data that you will need following the criteria exactly uh, from each committee with a timeline for receiving the information. Um, because it's no good if you miss the deadline or are pushed against the deadline. You want to be able to take your time and do a great job. And then have this as a, um, the Striving for Excellence submission and the process that you're going through as a chapter, um, a discussion point for the president-elect throughout the year at board meetings and any time the board gets together. It's a very important way of benchmarking your activities throughout the year. Uh, one of the things that we find really useful in Washington is to um, select a theme. Um, it can be funny. It can be serious. Uh, it just helps to get us more. Anything you can help to get yourselves more organized is, is usually good. Include proof in your submission. Don't just assume that people know what you're talking about. Um, Charts, graphs, um, examples in the appendix are really important as long as they're clearly marked, clearly labeled. Make it as same criteria, same. Um, um, what word am, am I looking for, Tina? But the same thing that I talked about during President of the Year. Make it easy for the reviewers to understand it. Anyone who picks this up should be able to understand where you're going. Well, why did you say that? Well, here's an example of why you said it, which would be included in the appendix. Um, it's important for the committee, committee to have regular meetings based on the deadline so that you don't fall behind, so that you're getting the information that you need from the various committee chairs or the person assigned by the committee chair. And if you're not, it's OK to give a nudge because Strength for Excellence is a way of making your chapter better. It's more than just winning a prize. It's way, a way of striving for excellence, making your chapter the best it can be. Um, I don't want to belabor a dead horse. A lot of the things that I spoke about 
during the President of the Year submission portion are applicable to striving for excellence, only bigger. <laughs> um, you have more opportunities. Any, well, what we found really useful was to give a proof. Uh, don't just say you did this and that and the other thing. Give a, an example. Give a proof. Give a chart. Give a graph. Give a picture. Give a drawing. Anything that the reader's eye, the reviewer's eye can go to other than a page full of words, it's really, really helpful. Um, can I just add one? And don't be afraid that? to toot your own horn. Same as with the President of the Year submission. You have to tell it like it is. And if you are, if you really think that you're a great chapter, you're an improved chapter, then tell it and make sure you prove it. Right. It, it, just to emphasize something that you said, Pat, and I think that Marion, you or Pat Bellotto or Holly, you can chime in as well. But we cannot emphasize enough how demonstrating what you say um, such as the growth of membership to be 10% or perhaps you did you know, something outstanding and you, want to sh you showed an ROI of something, you must demonstrate how you did that and how you achieved it and, and show the statistics. And if you need any help or support from SMPS National State, specifically with membership anyway, we can help you get those numbers. But it is critical. And I can tell you that you know, judges in the past for many years, these are things that they struggle with. You might have, and, and it very well may be true, you may have some really great claim to membership growth or to um, some type of um, sponsorship program or what you made or um, whatever it is, but there was nothing to back it up. And so always put your, put your in, in the seat of the judges when you go and review it again. So I don't know, Marion, if you or Pavelato have anything else to say, or Holly, but I do think that that is really a critical factor in putting together a winning submittal. Um, this is Marion, and um, I, I will reiterate what Tina said there. What happens is if, if you just leave it um, to the jurors to figure it out, you won't win. You need to, they're looking at several submissions at a time. This is very similar to a proposal you're submitting, and you don't know whether you were the first one read or the last one read. And after you've been the last, if you're the last one read, it's a little harder to get through the material. And, you know, as judges, we do our, the best we can. But if somebody's not really clearly stating, we grew our membership by 30%, and, you know, give us a graph and show us where you were in 2000. And you know, 10 and where you, where you are in 2012, make it easy for the judges and connect the dots for them. Don't expect they will make those assumptions. Absolutely. Um, this is Pat Elsian from the Washington, D.C. chapter. We, um, the chapter submitted for Striving for Excellence several years ago, and we did not win. It was kind of a haphazard idea. Well, we might as well go for it. We took it pretty casually, and we submitted what we thought was a winning presentation. The most valuable information we received, and this was prior to the webinar that you're putting on today, um, Tina, I applaud this a thousand percent, was to get a debriefing. Um, and one of the things that we found out was that we just weren't proving what we were saying. And I, I fully support that. Absolutely. It, it does make a difference. This is Patty Bellotto. I can attest to um, everything that everybody has said. I just remember to put yourself in the judge's shoes and make it easy for them. They don't want to be looking for information. They want it. They want to, they're going to be judging with a with a form, and it's going to have each one of these items that they're in the criteria. And we're going to be not we're going to be putting in our our evaluation, and then we're jumping down to the next one. So if you have to repeat something, make it easy for the judge and put it in two places. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pat. Well, we're going to go on to the next slide and uh, talk a little bit about the other uh, programs within Striving for Excellence. So, you know, there may be several of you who feel maybe putting to together a submittal for the Striving for Excellence entire program. Maybe you feel that um, you're just not there. Maybe it feels like such a daunting task, and but you still know that you've done something really amazing with either um, something that you've done in communication or in the programming and education. So we want, we still want you to get excited about putting in your submittal for maybe one of those. So that would be either your website, 
um, a newsletter. Your newsletter could be electronic or certainly in paper. Um, it could be a special event or a program. And um, you're not limited to just put one program in. If you had three programs, we've had chapters who submitted for each of their programs because they thought they were outstanding. So this is something for you to consider if you don't feel that you're ready to submit for the entire Striving for Excellence. But one of the things that you're working on really warrants that attention and recognition. So uh, I think, Marion, uh, will you be able to speak to this? Sure. OK. Um, OK. So communications, um, it takes in uh, newsletters and websites. Um, this year, we are staying with the same criteria that we had last year. We recognize there's quite a bit of um, change. There's a lot of change with social media and how chapters are communicating with their um, Members, so kind of bear with us as we look at that for next year, but we are staying with our criteria for this year. So the first, um, you'll be asked to look at your um, what your objective for your communication piece was, uh, the creativity that was involved in it, the quality, um, the actual content itself, and then the frequency. And so as you can see, there, the points range from five for your objective um, down to with created creativity, quality, content all being 10 each and then five for frequency. Um, it's really, really important to state your goals. What did the chapter hope to achieve through its website or its newsletter? Um, who is your target audience? And, um, and if you can't state those objectively, it's very hard for the judges to understand if you were successful or not. So that's really, really important. Um, in your research, you know, you should address the research planning and implementation. Um, describe your objectives were achieved and how they were achieved. Provide the budget for the newsletter or website. And then how often is the newsletter distributed or how frequently is your website updated? And I would um, let, it would, it will remind you of this again, but you must cover each of these categories whether or not, you know, even if you must address your frequency, even if you only send it out once a year, why do you only send it out once a year? Make sure it's very clear to the judges why. Perfect. Papalotto, you know, we were talking about this as well. Is there anything that you wanted to add to this? Well, um, it's, again, it's to be specific. Uh, the newsletter needs to be easy to read, informative, and published in a timely manner. Uh, you need to state why you're doing it quarterly or yearly or whatever. Um, follow, Marion said this before, but following national corporate identity guidelines for local design, logo design and placement is very critical. Um, I might have been on the same panel as Marion when we actually uh, gave, uh, took points off for a chapter that did not use the uh, national, follow national's guidelines. Uh, and then the website needs to be easy to navigate, timely, information has to be updated frequently, especially with in event information, because the judges will be going to the website and actually cl clicking around. Uh, I happen to remember one year where we actually, I think it was the Boston chapter actually won because they were actually showing pictures of members. It was They were showing warmth. They were trying to um, evoke, you know, uh, just a warm chapter. And um, it some of them were very cold, where they were just all words, and they weren't very gra graphic. Boston's happens to be graphic that year, and they won the award. Uh, just give people reasons to come back to the site. So that's well. Thank you. Uh, the only other thing that I just want to add here, because it has been mentioned a few times already, and that is the um, the identity and using your chapter logo. If any of you feel that that's something you need to work on or you haven't used it or if you're using something new right now, I don't know who that would be because I don't, haven't seen any chapters do that in a while, actually. But we have uh, files of every single chapter's um, set of logos. So we have them in all the formats that you need them, whether it's for your website or whether it's a high resolution image that you need for um, print materials. So we, every president or someone on your board should have all those files if they're not already in your library within my SMTS, your chapter site. If you have any questions on that, either contact me or Mary Cruz, and we are happy to get you set with all the images that you need to do um, what you need to do. 
And the next slide, just on submission, uh, Marion or Patty, do you want to talk about that just a little bit? I'm sure. It's very similar. One, mm -hmm. one application, you don't need 10. Um, your summary statement, um, you will need to do 10 originals and one PDF um, of the submittal. The summary statement is um, there's some very strict guidelines and we ask you to adhere to them to the T. This is just like um, the proposals that you're asked. If it says, uh, you know, this particular one says it may not exceed two pages, the summary statement, it should be on eight and a half by 11 inch paper and a minimum of 10 point font. So, you know, those are, you know, you will be disqualified if you can't adhere to that. It's difficult for us to throw chapters out, um, but it's unfair to have a chapter win if they don't follow the guidelines, even if they are terrific. Um, yeah. the newsletter, you'll submit 10 copies of your last five issues of the newsletter. If it's electronic, what we ask is that you submit a CD containing the last five issues along with 10 paper copies. Um, and that's so that the judges have something to look at in their hands. Uh, on the website, include your web address on the summary statement, and um, the judges will be visiting your site, so please submit 10 printed copies of about 5 to 10 pages of your, uh, the key pages on your website. Make sure to include your um, home page so they, they're familiar with where they're at, making sure they're at the right spot. And I think, um, you know, the most, the, the most successful entries I've seen on the website is where they can actually um, take a, a snapshot of a page and then use pull out bullets and points to say, you know, and really address what's going on and why it's positioned there. It really helps the judges understand and navigate a little better. Okay. And we have another um, winning submittal for a chapter's website in first place, and that is Washington, uh, D.C. So again, they were doing a lot of really great work last year, and I'm going to ask Pat Ellis one more time to um, just walk us through this a little bit. Well, thanks a lot, Tina. Um, let me first state this by um, stating flat out I am not a communications specialist. Um, the DC chapter decided to use the um, the website, and we were, I think, hosting Bill Business Larry. Uh, the year that we decided that we would start blogging and and using social media more often, we had some members who were really at the, on the for us on the cutting edge of social media. So. It became more, much more electronic focused last year. Um, the, again, it was really important to submit screenshots. We had um, a website, our website specialist who is a member who is graphically not challenged, um, put the submission together, and she did a great job. It's really important to have someone who understands to put the submission together so that they can get everything in there that's important. And we, again, we follow the same theme um, with slight variations, but one of the things that we try to do is include as many pictures as we can possibly include because they speak a thousand words. I should they do. copyright that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's great, and what this demonstrates as well is the um, the need to really show measurements and metrics, improve what you're stating about it, and you know, even displaying and, and demonstrating what it was that you want to achieve, who that audience is, all of those elements. And I think that this is one of the things the judges have talked about when looking at this particular um, submittal. Exactly, and having a um a kind of a, a website um, specialist on the board who's interested in, in this kind of thing. She knew where to get the metrics, how to get the metrics, other than just stating them and putting them in a pretty little graph. She knew she had that information available. So as close to an expert as you can, um, you know, you've got people in your chapter who are really good at a whole lot of different things. Make sure you utilize those individuals. Absolutely. 
Well, thank you for that. I think that we have um, a few slides to go, and it is 2.54 right now. So we have about six more minutes to go. So I'm going to try to get through some of these other slides. And um, I know that what you're seeing is many of the judging criteria and scoring are very similar for the special event, educational programming, and the others. So um, Marion, if you might go quickly through some of this, and then um, we can go through some of the highlights. And then also talk about some other changes that Holly can talk about um, at the end of the presentation. Marion? Sorry, I forgot to turn myself off mute. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, th this one uh, slide speaks really well for itself. I think you can see there are some slight nuances between the special event and a program at, when it comes to creativity versus quality and content. Um, just remember, you know, this again, this is a submittal that you're trying to win, and so you should be gearing your um, submission to the criteria that's going to be judged upon. And, uh, I think that's enough said there. I think they can figure it out from there. Perfect. Do you want to go through this? Um, given the sense of timing, I think, um, yeah. you know, again, we're back to, you know, it's really important to go to state your objectives, um, to follow what they're questioning. Um, this one does not have the same, the points have not been delegated in the same sense other than on the slide before, you knew there was 10 points for creativity. So between planning and inspiration for this event and promoting and marketing your efforts, for example, under special event for creativity, you'll have 10 points there. And the judges will have their liberty to decide how, where they feel you are on a scale of 1 to 10 in creativity. Um, again, address everything you can, everything that's asked for. Make sure you're addressing that and do it in the order that it's asked for. And, and just one thing on this, because obviously there's a lot of information, and by the time all of you are starting to work on these things, um, if you need more detail, again, any of us are available to answer questions um, a little bit you know, more specifically. But don't forget that within my SMPS in the Chapter Leaders Library, um, we archive and post all the winning submittals from the past years. So you'll see certainly at least from 2011, 2010, and I think 2009 are there too. But if you're submitting for, say, a special event and you just kind of want to see how someone else did it, certainly a winning submittal, go to the library, take a look at them, and that will kind of help you out as well. So um, I'm not sure if everyone is always aware of that, but there are definitely some great ideas and, and samples in that library. Um, this is this is really again for the special event and the educational program. You know, submitting again only one application for the submittal it doesn't have to go with every um, original uh, that you send in. The summary statement, all of this is outlined in the criteria that's on the website. Um, this isn't hasn't changed from the other submission requirements. Um, just make sure to submit 10 originals of the program or the event for sure and any other related materials. With all of the submissions, one of the things that you really need to think about, it doesn't matter what you're submitting for, understand that you want all the judges to be looking at the same thing. Sometimes I receive, um, and all the judges would know this because I only get one of them, I get some really amazing creative packaging, but you can't do that for every one of the, uh, every one of the submittals. So if you want to be a little bit more creative and have fun with it, and you want the judges to see that, I think that that's fine. But put in at least a photo of what you did so we can send that to the judges and, and they can see what you did. So we know you like to have a lot of fun with it. We know you like some creativity. You might want to get some bonus support points for the Striving for Excellence um, submittal. But those are things you just need to think about because the judges need to be looking at the same thing. So just a thought. Um, I'm actually going to, if you don't mind, and again, we can go through a lot of these, but I want to go through um, just some quick tips that you, maybe you can highlight a little bit more, and then we're going to have Holly address a couple of things. So, um, Marion, would you mind going through these quick tips? Sure. Um, we put these together because as, um, you know, collectively as judges, this is what we felt were the probably the top five things that were really important. Uh, one is to follow the directions, maintaining the criteria order. You really don't want your judge, uh, jurors to have to start looking for your answers. You want to make it easy for them. Um, articulate 
the objectives and how address how your chapter met them in the results. It's very, very important that you connect both of those. Um, you know, are, who was your target market, things like that, and how did you, um, how did they respond to the results? Using metrics to demonstrate your results, percentages, uh, dollars, um, you know, collected that were greater than before, um, numbers, I think you can remember in the, some of the slides you saw the charts and graphs demonstrating how the chapter membership had risen in uh, one of the categories. So you, you want to you want to be able to make that as visual as possible, but using numbers to make that happen. Address each issue within a category. It's even if you are not managing or doing anything right now, if you have you have to address it and how you have managed it in the past or how you will be managing it in the future, but it must be addressed or you get zero points. And it's very challenging to have to give someone zero points. And finally, be clear, concise, and convincing. Um, you have to tell you have to sell us on why you're the best chapter or your program or your communication piece was the best. Thank you, Marion. Um, I think at this point we just want to share a couple of other things that we will be working on as a team. And Holly, I'm going to give this over to you. Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, as your chapter delegate, I just I know the hard work that you all have gone through throughout this year. So I really appreciate your efforts to make your chapter successful. And th thank you for joining this call. Um, just wanted to give you you guys a heads up on some things that we're looking at, uh, kind of a strategic level. Uh, in, in terms of the Striving for Excellence criteria. Each year the committee has the liberty to make adjustments and changes as needed to the criteria. And while there were no changes this year, we're really wanting to look at it, the committee and the National Board and staff, really assessing the SFB cr criteria in more detail to make sure that it's consistent with SNPS's overall mission, vision, and goals. Um, and also, as Marion alluded to earlier, is it is it up to date with changing technology and communication methods? So, just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, and if the, if the, we do end up adjusting or changing the criteria, the changes are going to be incremental, and they're going to be communicated to chapters in, in advance. Because, as Pat mentioned earlier, you know a lot of chapters use the SFE criteria as a roadmap for planning their year. So we really want to make sure that it's aligned with the bigger picture of our organization, but also that we communicate changes in time so that if there are any adjustments that need to be made, uh, the chapters have time to do that. Uh, there were a couple things, too, that I just wanted to point out to you all. When, when you're putting together your SFE submittal, each year the chapters get the score sheets that have the jurors' comments. And I know that SNPS chapter leadership is dynamic, so the person that's putting together the SFE submittal this year might not be the same person that's putting it together next year. So if you can check out past submittals that your chapter has put together and look at the score sheets to just kind of get a sense of what the comments were in previous years, if you don't have that already, that's a good thing to do. And then just I think it's also a fun idea to, after you have put together your submittal, sharing it with your chapter after it's complete, just to showcase all that you've done. Because like I said earlier, I know you guys have put in a lot of hard work to it, and it's always good to, to share that with the greater membership of your chapter. So those are just uh, some highlights and, and heads up that I wanted to provide to you guys. And thanks again for participating, and also thank you for your leadership in SNPS. Thank you, Holly. Well, we're just about to end this. One of the things we just want to make sure is that you provide us any feedback um, that you think is relevant and that will make it even better um, in future webinars to come. Certainly even timing, any other questions, maybe more time for questions or a different format. So um, maybe we can even do polling in the future um, in, in, and make that available to you. So just let us know what your thoughts are. If you have suggestions, we will, as a team and a committee, be reaching out to you throughout the year. I think there's going to be a lot of exciting and things that Holly talked about that are kind of going on in the horizon to really make this um, a great SNPS national organization working with our chapters. So you can send responses to me. Um, you can send them to Mary, Mary at SNPS.org as well, and we will share them with the whole team. So that concludes our presentation. I just want to say goodbye and good luck. I hope everyone submits and you have the information that you need. If you don't, give us a call, and we hope to see you in San Francisco at Build Business. So take care, everyone, and goodbye.